Hey everyone, I'm Laszlo and this is my Monday stream. Uh, for a couple of weeks now, I've been exploring technologies that uh, I'm interested about and uh, I heard about that it's maybe possible or there is a tutorial out there and I want to try it, typically connecting a couple of things in cloud native world. And uh, yeah, uh, usually it's supposed to be easy. Uh, so far it has been uh, without too many hiccups and uh, hopefully that's gonna be today as well. Today I'm going to use a password manager Originally, I wanted to do one password, but it looks to be very tricky. So I actually uh, tried Bitwarden. Uh, now I used Bitwarden before, but it's not my go-to tool. So basically I registered a brand new Bitwarden account for this stream. So anything that I might show on the screen, it's nothing production. So, so nothing gonna go uh, bad in the stream. Um, so I wanted to do, uh, so, First of all, I'm going to use the external secrets operator, uh, which is sitting in the cluster and has access to my password manager. And based on keys, uh, secret names, it's going to make certain items available as Kubernetes secrets for my applications. So that's pretty cool because, uh, you know, I'm a GitOps guy. I, uh, I put everything into Git and I've been using uh, GitOps uh, native approach so far, which was uh, I encrypted secrets uh, with, a, with a private key and uh, using the uh, uh, the sealed secrets operator. And, you know, that was sitting inside Git. Now, releasing and, and, and the workflow of those secrets has been very nice. However, rotating the secrets and, and finding what is stored where, it's not very easy uh, with the uh, sealed secrets uh, operator. That's why I'm looking into the external secrets uh, one, uh, where you know secrets live outside of Kubernetes and GitOps. It has a separate life cycle and has a source of truth. Uh, in this case, our case is going to be Bitwarden. And uh, basically, I just uh, pull in uh, with this tool that is called external secrets operator. Now it has many providers, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, basically, I tried before the Azure one. I, uh, let me tell you that uh, that one worked uh, pretty easily, uh, but this time around I want to use the more you know uh, human friendly ones like uh, One Password or Bitwarden, and I wanted to do the the One Password one. But um, even though I have a paid account on One Password, there is I just ran into a bunch of marketing terms and product branding and 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 possible pricing and you know like payment implications. So I started reading this tutorial this morning just to prep for this uh, stream, and I went to the Secrets Automation page. Wonderful, brilliant! The contact sales uh, button is already uh, giving you something away. That in the bottom you will see that uh, you have three three uh, volt access credits and up to 25 i have to pay 29 a month and there is some text like how this is calculated it's normalized per day and then they take an average or whatever i really don't want to get, get into this like what's what's a three uh three volt access credits i mean what's a credit if i send a uh, uh an API call that uh, that's my credit is gone or, or how is it it's supposed to work? Now I didn't uh, so I tried to, to go into this rabbit hole, but then uh, the technical things were also not as straightforward as hey here's an application it runs in your cluster and it calls an API and it gets your secrets end of story. It was more entangled with marketing and branding and payment things, which uh, I wasn't very pleased about. I, I have to say I have to tell you that um, I'm a I'm a paying customer of one password and you know integrating with an API that uh, shouldn't be a big thing, but apparently it is. However, I, I looked into Bitwarden and the pricing and more precisely or more importantly, external secrets operator, even though uh, the uh, uh, Bitwarden integration is not listed here, turns out it's because it's just based on a webhook. Yes, it's a lot simpler than than the, the, the one password one, or it's supposed to be a lot simpler. And uh, in the examples section, there is the Bitwarden tutorial, uh, which I scanned through in the morning, just so I don't hit anything uh, crazy during the stream. And actually, let's go through it together. So how does it work? Uh, requirements, Bitwarden account, check. 
Kubernetes secret, which contains your Bitwarden credentials. Yes, I'm going to create this secret. I need the Docker image with Bitwarden inside. Uh, however, they provide me the Docker file. So I'm just going to build this Docker file. And this image is going to have an entry point, which is basically as simple as, as it can get. There is the Bitwarden CLI, which serves an API based on some environment variables. Great. You don't have to make things more uh, difficult than that. Uh, like just side note, like today, uh, I read something on LinkedIn that, uh, you know, there was a change with Ter Terraform and uh, how they were struggling to, to you know, make their cloud service uh, very differentiated because it's at the, end, at the end of the day, a state store can be in S3 in other places as well. And the same here, it shouldn't be too difficult. You have a CLI, it hosts an API, you export the key, end of story. So I'm really hopeful that it's going to be simple today. Uh, yes, I need to create then uh, some Kubernetes secret with the Bitwarden username and password. And then I'm going to deploy the container with the CLI. So far, so good. And then these are uh, external secrets operator custom resources. You know, in Kubernetes, you can have custom resources. That is sort of the extension point of Kubernetes. People can define whatever kind YAMLs. I can make a Laszlo uh, resource if I wanted to, and then you can instantiate Laszlo as many times you want. Uh, but basically, external secrets operator is the one checking these uh, YAML snippets. And every time I reference a field inside Bitwarden, uh, I place this configuration, and it will just get me uh, a secret through the API. And then I need to create two. Uh, one is for username, username and password types in Bitwarden, and the other one is uh, if I want to have custom fields. Uh, cool. And then I create an external secret, where are, uh, which is actually from here on. This is uh, is going to be the application developer's responsibility. Uh, hey, I need an, a secret from Bitwarden. I know the name, uh, which is username and password and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to reference those from Bitwarden. So, and that's the end of the tutorial page. So let's see how, how hard this can be. Uh, I have an hour, hour and a half today. And yeah, uh, obviously, if something becomes difficult, I might cut the stream. And definitely, there is going to be a blog post about this and maybe the one password as well, because I'm still interested, like whether it's really that bad as I uh, pictured it. All right. So, first things first, I need a cluster. So, I usually use K3D. Uh, And we have a cluster in a few seconds. I just realized I was babbling for eight whole minutes about Bitwarden and what I want to do. So let's get down to business. Uh, so I have a cluster. Uh, pods are starting up, and it's an empty cluster. So that's what uh, you would expect. Now I need to install the external secrets operator. Um, Probably they have a Helm chart. So getting started, installing with Helm. I need to add the Helm repository. That's cool. And then I'm going to install external secrets. And when I do that, I usually create a values file. So I add the file called uh, uh, values. Um, let's save this one. And it's basically how I'm installed external secrets, yada, yada, uh, without any parameters. So maybe it's going to be simpler than I expected. But uh, let's see. And this is going to be readme.markdown. This is um, external secrets. It's the name of the release. And this is the name of the chart. Then into the external secrets namespace and 
it will create the namespace as well. And then I will reference my values YAML just in case I'm gonna need something in the future. So if I do this, okay, it doesn't like an empty uh, YAML file, but how about, oh, wait, I didn't save it. So that was the issue. Yes. So external secrets operator is running inside a namespace called external secrets. It has, I guess this is the business logic. This is some auxiliary services and the other one as well. So yeah, and they are running. So, and if I get CRDs, uh, these are all the custom resources in the cluster and I uh, grab on external dash secrets. So all of these are actually resources that external secrets operator understands. Uh, I'm not going to use half of these. So yeah, but that's just for, you know, regular CRD uh, knowledge. All right. Okay, so I think I'm going to jump in right into the Bitwarden tutorial. So I have the operator. I have the account, the Docker file. So this Docker file is from Debian, CLI version. Should we just stick to this one or should we get the latest? Let's get the latest. Mm. Releases. Oh, this is odd. They have a different versioning scheme. Maybe they, they used to use that one. No. So CLI is versioned differently. Hmm. Let me just double check this. Uh, CLI, no. Uh, anyways, I will use whatever that is inside the tutorial at install wget version version and version. All right. And we can have an entry point shell file. And inside there is going to be And the, the CLI serving as an API host or most likely proxy. So it's going to take this variable and the other two. Uh, I'm not sure where the password is going to come from because PV password, maybe I'm missing. Oh, no, no, no. So password env, BW password, me, most likely means that it's going to search for an environment variable called this. So I don't need to add the dollar sign here, I hope. All right, then. Uh, so the Docker file is pretty much ready. Mm. And let me build. Docker build uh, dash t tag it uh, my bitwarden CLI image and just the current path. All right, so if I do Docker run 
uh, my Bitwarden CLI image, it's gonna fail uh, with some error message, but let me see if that error message kind of makes sense or doesn't. Okay, I gl I'm glad I ran it because entry point shell is uh, not with the right um, permissions. So chmod, I'm making it executable and then run it, run the build again. And it's strange because I always found it very strange that, that my uh, permission bits outside of the container get it inside the container with the same bit perhaps, uh, but that's where I'm not too strong. So maybe I'm saying stupid things, but no, I did not. So uh, yes, so the CLI is running and it's uh, asking me some permissions and stuff because uh, credentials and stuff because I didn't provide any environment variables. So I believe uh, the image works fine. Now I'm gonna use this image, uh, which is called my Bitwarden CLI inside K3D and that K3D is running on my local cluster. And I could push this image onto a container registry, uh, but I don't want to because then I might copy some credentials and so on. So how about K3D has a nice uh, comment. Somehow I can import an image, K3D uh, image. Import, all right. It's not too difficult. Uh, we recently wrote a tutorial on K3D, and actually this was one of the uh, the, the tips uh, we shared. Uh, but I didn't need to look it up because the CLI was helpful enough. Uh huh. I have to set cluster somehow. Mm. Import and then C cluster and then key. K3D cluster LS. I named it as Bitwarden. So I'm importing into the cluster called Bitwarden. Good, good stuff. So this will be available inside K3D for me to use. So next step. Mm. Now we are progressing nicely so far. So this is the Bitwarden CLI container. A uh, new file, uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna be called. What is this? It's the Bitwarden CLI. All right, so we have a deployment. Um, the image name, yes. And I'm going to use the BW host. Mm. From this uh, secret and then the user and the password, which was, which I was supposed to create it already. So it's above. Yeah. So let me just put this file into the same uh, or, or the CML into the same uh, file and just uh, making this file of multiple yellow documents username i don't know my password is this one please don't make anything bad with it it's an empty vault and i'm gonna reset it and delete it and whatever um bit for the username what's my username maybe it's my email mm, and what's host So this is my vault and I can create an item, which is going to be a type of login. It's going to be called test, or maybe first. And username is no such user and password is blah, blah. And I save this one. I want to get the URL of the vault. Maybe it's vaultbitwarden.com. Maybe it's not um, my vault. Mm. 
email, security. All right, I'm just going to use vaultbitwarden.com and uh, my email from here. All right, uh, so host, user, and password is set. There is a probe. I trust you guys that you shared the right YAML. And there's a network policy, uh, which is uh, they uh, posted a hint here that uh, there is no authentication uh, built in into this uh, Bitwarden CLI Docker container that we just built. So basically, anybody who is inside the cluster can call this and fetch secrets without you know anything, uh, any protection or any authorization. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. I'm actually, I'm not sure if network policies work inside K3D. So uh, do we need some special uh, container networks, K3D network policy? Yeah, I has I would have to use the Calico uh, container network like CNI, Container Network Interface, instead of Flannel, which is the default. So most likely this network policy doesn't even work. So I might just drop it for the simplicity of this uh, stream. And then the other uh, hint or, or note they made is that the liveness probe is doing something uh, meaningful. So it's calling the sync uh, endpoint, uh, which is refreshing secrets from the, the bit, from, from Bitwarden, essentially. So that's uh, something to keep in mind that uh, that every two minutes, so my secret's gonna be synchronized every two minutes. So if I change something, it might kind of take some time until it gets to my application. All right. So that was for the YAML of the CLI. Let me deploy this because uh, uh, I want to see some errors or something before I move forward. Okay, namespace error. Also, yeah, I like string data much better. So I can, yeah, so I don't have to base 64 things. So that was one problem, and the other one was uh, with the uh, namespace. And my namespace is called external secrets. So let me replace this line with external secrets, save it, and apply it again. Everything's created. And let's go to the external secrets namespace. So it's running, but it's not ready. So let's look at the logs. Mm -hmm. Vault is unlogged. I believe this is a success, error, a success message and it's running on the port. Okay. I hope it's gonna be fine. And it's now ready. It's most likely those uh, um probes had some yeah initial delay seconds 20 and 10 so probably that's what we have seen it was a bit slow to report back as healthy good stuff um once i have everything up and running i'm, I'm going to try to reference a, a regular text key like a password and i'm also going to try to to reference a json uh file uh, from the secret because it's very often that I need to put uh, a whole JSON f um, file like 20 lines long like in Google Cloud's um, service accounts and so on or, or many other service accounts. So I want to try to mount uh, a file-based uh, secret as well, just some uh, future plans once we get there. So I'm going to add these two YAMLs again. Uh, let me just keep this file and extend it. And I'm also adding a namespace here. So 
So this is a uh, this is something a cluster administrator creates in the cluster. Um, it's called a cluster secret store for Bitwarden login data, and they can access the Bitwarden CLI, bit which, what we just deployed on this URL, which is basically cluster local namespace local URLs. And um, it's the same with the other one. It's just how it refers to different JSON stuff inside Bitwarden's API responses. Fine by me. And apply. All right. These CRDs are created. So if I do get cluster secret store, or just like this cluster secret store, I have two, which are read only capabilities. Now, interesting. Uh, I know for a fact that external secrets uh, is able to write secrets as well. Um, that's uh, an advanced use case, but uh, I've been playing around with this idea for a long time. So if I can do write uh, enabled secrets as well with one of the secret stores, then all I have to do to create a secret in the in the in the vault in the original like the the source of truth place is that I create a Kubernetes secret. And then this operator is going to create the secret inside the uh, the vault, uh, which is uh, pretty handy for me because uh, my company, Gimlet, is uh, GitOps focused. And all our tool does is uh, we just write stuff into Git. And then, you know, GitOps uh, um, controllers like Flux synchronizes things down to the cluster. But if I create a Kubernetes secret inside Git, and Flux puts it on the cluster, then this operator is able to put it inside the vault. So essentially, uh, Gimlet would be able to create secrets without knowing uh, the uh, credentials, which is pretty much like a, a huge machinery, but uh, also pretty neat. All right, next step is uh, how to use it. So now I'm a developer. I'm going to uh, write an application. Of course, just going to use something. And I'm going to put this, uh, this YAML inside my GitOps folder or something. So this time around, I'm creating a new file and save it. I'm going to call it app YAML. And let's just look inside this. So external secrets says my DB secrets, but, but basically I named it first uh, inside Bitwarden. So uh, let's use that. Namespace is going to be, it's probably going to work cross namespaces as well. So let's keep default. Uh, I'm a developer now and I'm uh, uh, new to Kubernetes. So I'm just going to work inside default. That's fine. Spec target. Now the target is the name of the secret that this operator should create. Deletion policy delete. I have no, cue, no clue. This is the type of the secret. And there's going to be data inside. A few examples, but I'm just going to do simple things. I'm going to call it first. That's sort of the key inside uh, the secret that's called first. So everything is first, first. That's probably fine. And then also, I refer to username with. Uh, Golang templates. That is interesting, uh, especially if you use these Golang templates inside like Flux. Flux might try to replace this if you have uh, post-processing enabled. So there's just something to keep in mind. Uh, there's an annotation actually for Flux to ignore these. And post-processing is not enabled for most people. So never mind what I said. All right, so that's the target. And I'm going to refer to secret key, source ref. All right, so secret key is most likely this username has to match up with this key. key. So that's the basically what we are defining. And the source is uh, coming from a cluster secret store. Uh, which is called Bitwarden login. And the remote ref is uh, actually first and then property username. So 
Bitwarden login. That's basically just uh, the type of secret, which is referencing a secret inside Bitwarden that's called first, which has a property key, uh, so property username. So let's go to Bitwarden and look at my vault where I put an item called first, which has a username. So basically, uh, no such user, this string should present in the secret, ultimately. Uh, I'm very interested if that happens. So apply f app yaml. I don't know how to write yamls. Yeah, I just have to put things into quotes. Okay, so now uh, custom resource external secret is created inside the default namespace. So let's go default. <clears throat> it already says it's synced, but let's go step by step. So this is the item that the operator sees, goes to Bitwarden, fetches things, and then creates a regular Kubernetes secret, which is called first. And if I describe this uh, secret, uh, it has a field called first with 10 bytes. Now, no such user. Is it 10 characters? Yeah, four, eight, 10. Yeah, that's, that's most likely good. But basically, if I get the secret and in, in YAML and copy this base64 stuff. This is the most annoying part of Kubernetes. Like this is the thing you have done at least 10,000 times. So I'm not some magician. This is just what I do for a living. Yes, so the whole run trip is done. No such user, uh, which is the username defined in Vault reached the cluster. So. 32 minutes, it's not my uh, uh, success. It's actually external secrets operator is super cool. I mean, having this many integrations uh, up and running, uh, my colleague tried Azure before that worked pretty well. And uh, one password I think is just there, uh, shenanigans, uh, why it's more difficult than it's supposed to be. But then Bitwarden uh, was, uh, was very simple to, to use. Uh, now I'm not done yet. I'm actually I actually want to do this multi-line secret thing that, where I put a JSON inside uh, Bitwarden, and uh, maybe I'm gonna uh, test a few more things. So, if you need a username or password, you have to use Bitwarden login. So basically, if I have a secret where it is called where the use where I where I want to just get out the username or the password, I have to use uh, uh, this type Bitwarden login, or if I need a custom field of a secret, I have to use Bitwarden fields. I actually want to do that now because uh, new custom field uh, of type text hidden boolean linked. Let me call this multi-line and the value should be a JSON structure. So like, can I, oh no, can I uh, edit things here and make it multi-line? Hmm. Bit for then multi-line text. Mm, it doesn't look good. Like uh, the first hit is from five years ago. Yeah, SSH keys. Hallelujah. Yes, I started to use yeah. Oh no. Oh, come on. Hmm. 
Oh no, everybody's saying, yeah, this would be useful, this would be useful. I agree with the previous statements. This is a must-have feature. I mean, come on. And no reaction from Bitwarden whatsoever. Let's go to GitHub. No, not here. So Bitwarden is open source, I believe. Bitwarden server. Yeah, why not? Issues. Multiline. Nothing. All right, so Bitwarden is easy to use, but it doesn't have multi-line strings. Like, yeah, whatever. So let me read this further. The key is the ID of the secret, yes. Property is the name of the field. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, name of the custom field. Maybe I, uh, I create a different type. So new item, login, card, ah, oh, secure note. Let's try a secure note. Hmm. Is this even possible? So this is a uh, multi-line. And notes are, I guess, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't know what I'm typing. I just want to create a, a JSON. And I'm probably doing something that's uh, not uh, going to work, but I want to try a multi-line string. <clears throat> so So the object item key, data. So maybe I should uh, extend this tutorial. I have time. I'm going to do a shortened version as well. But basically, we achieved what I wanted to achieve uh, besides the multi-line string. So I'm just going to explore further. So inside the external secrets namespace, there is the uh, Bitwarden CLI. Uh, which is running. So how about I'm going to port forward this to my local. So k okay, port forward deploy slash bit more than CLI port. What was the port? This funky one to my local funky one. All right. And if I do a curl on I want to actually see like uh, what what is the JSON payload. So this is object item slash blah blah. So object item slash it was called first. Oh. Okay, and it gave me back uh, a, a JSON. Yeah, so I think I can make this work. So this was. Uh, first, which has which is a type of login and has username and password. And let me create this multi-line thing after all. It's a multi-line secret node. So I'm going to get multi-line where the node is multi-line with new line characters. It's always a pain, but uh, let's see. Uh, so it was a JSON path reference that uh, inside this uh, we might end up with a PR in this uh, stream. I'm, I'm fired up. So 
I'm not very good at JSON path, but uh, let's just try it. So, is JQ JSON path? Most likely not. So, this was data fields and. <clears throat> Yeah, be, uh, yeah. So data fields name equals pro property, name equals property, and then value is x. Okay, so this was the uh, fields. And what about uh, the note? Mm. Okay, that's even easier. It's going to be data name. Uh, sorry, data and no data dot notes. So how about I create a new YAML piece? Now this is where Kubernetes is cool and open source is cool. I mean, I was reading a super easy tutorial and I wanted to do something a little little extra and I might be able to do it or have fun trying. <laughs> so, so this is Bitwarden notes, Bitwarden notes, uh, object item remote ref key, that's fine. Mm, and data. dot notes data dot notes and actually I don't have to do anything else this is 10 times easier than the others because it's it is a very flat structure like a, a note is identified by a key already which is up here and then I just take the note so I'm gonna use for the notes type like this and I'm gonna reference uh, another which is called then um, this is the end place where it should go inside the value multi and I'm re referring another secret key which is called multi which is a bit for the notes type, the thing we just made. Remote ref is multi-line. And we don't even need a property. Do we need to define it? Because it's not used. I will just, just leave it blah, blah for now. And I'm gonna deploy it. Mm. All right, and I have uh, cluster secret store types, three of them. Bitwarden nodes is here. And I'm going to deploy my application as well, where I refer to this secret. So I'm going to get the external secret inside all the namespaces. And it's synced. So I'm going to get the secret. First, and I'm going to describe the secret. It has two items. One of them is 39 bytes. So I think we are very close. Of course, new lines not going to work. Or if they work at first try, then I'm just going to stop. So uh, get secret is YAML. Uh, take this long base 64 and echo it into the B code. And I always mess this up and new lines work holy everything <laughs> so uh, I think just to conclude this stream I will try to file a PR uh, to the external secrets documentation page uh, which is uh, under examples so let me go here and find their source code External secrets, website maybe, web, 
No, maybe it's in the root. Docs, examples, Bitwarden. Here we are, fork. Create fork. There used to be a nice uh, photocopier machine animation here. I miss it. All right, uh, examples, docs, examples, Bitwarden, edit. Uh, Bitwarden secret YAML. Oh, there are nice. Uh, where do you include this? No, I need I need to clone this. I, I just don't. Uh, I'm not that good at uh, Git, GitHub's UI. So somebody is pushing binary files here. All right. So we are. External secrets, docs, examples, Bitwarden, and Bitwarden secret YAML, where it is. It's snippets. Snippets. Bit, 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 bit. Mm hmm. It's not the one I'm looking for. Bitwarden secret store YAML. Uh huh. So a third one, which is called, uh, uh, let me just copy my stuff, which is, where it is, here. It is called Bitwarden notes. It's using the same way to identify keys, and the JSON path is really just pointing at the nodes. So I add it here, and I'm going to go back to the other page. Examples Bitwarden. Here, the two cluster secret store to deploy. If you need to use username and password, the secret, you have to use login. If you need the custom field, you use the fields. If you need, uh, if you need uh, to use a Bitwarden uh, note for multi-line strings, SSH keys service account. Key, key, account JSON files. You have to use Bitwarden notes. Okay, how does it look? Good stuff. All right, then there is just one more thing is that uh, I uh, don't make use of the uh, property. Mm, so I think I can drop, uh, I, I need, yeah, I need to do two things. So first of all, I want to try by not providing property. I want to see if this works. And I will add this inside the uh, the example, which is Bitwarden secret. Down here, I'm gonna add a multi-line. Let's call it service account key and source ref Bitwarden nodes. Yes. Uh, key GK mm. 
clear like this. And when people refer to it, I should uh, use it as uh, for my own stuff. It's getting late in the day here in Hungary. Sorry for being a bit slower by now. Yes, so this is how you use the secret. And it's called uh, service account key and uh, new line ed byte space and use the key that is called uh, service account key. So, yeah, the remote ref is, should be just the same. Yeah, let's, let's do it like this. And okie dokie. And ideally, you mount this as a file. So the way you refer to this secret is that you put it into a file and yada yada. But this example will not uh, show that. So external secrets. Get diff. Yes, it's a bit for the notes. All right. And as a final thing, I need to try if uh, if my app YAML works like that. So um, if I don't uh, provide the uh, property and if I change something inside, uh, yeah, how to make sure this works. You know what? I will verify that outside of the stream just to spare you from that. So it is still synchronized and yeah, it's probably fine. So let me let me make the pull request and just conclude the stream. So back to external secrets. Yeah, I, I've seen this one. Using bit more than notes for multi-line uh, secrets. Push main. And then I'm going to open the pull request. So here we are. Yeah, I want to make a pull request, GitHub. You are not offering that. Not cool. This branch is one commit ahead, contribute, open pull request. What is the problem you are trying to solve? Uh, adding a, a new, what am I adding? Secret store, how is it called? Cluster secret store. For Bitwarden to use note notes as multi-line secrets. Related issue. Nope. Mm. I wanted to use multi line strings, SSH keys, and service countries and files. And bit more than notes seem the right kind of type for them. Checklist. And to be honest, I didn't read it, but hope I don't do anything wrong. Sign off. No, <laughs> I have no idea. 
yeah, this is the part where I don't want to contribute to open source anymore. I think I need to make a new commit. So I revert to here. Uh -uh, no, not revert, but uh, reset. Where am I? I don't know what, I'm, what I did, but git reset to here. I have all these files as modified, git add, git commit, and dash dash sign off. Good. Git push origin main force. All right, and I, yes, let's see. Okay, I messed this up. No idea. This pull request is bogus. Anyways, I think this is just enough for the stream. So uh, we used external secrets operator and referenced secrets from Bitwarden, uh, where I believe Bitwarden is sufficiently mature enough to you know, share secrets in your team structure your secrets per application there were folders as well so so most likely uh you can use bitwarden as a backend for your application secrets if you are a mid-sized or like a 10 person development team or 20 you don't need uh hashicorp's vault especially after the uh, uh license change and so on you don't need fancy things and this is i believe this is uh if rolled out fully it this is uh this is definitely better than the uh, uh, sealed secrets uh, operator that I've been using so far. So I'm pretty keen on ex exploring this further. So there's gonna, going to be a blog post and uh, I might move all my secrets to Bitwarden as well. It's cheaper as well uh, because I pay like a hundred dollars uh, for one password for two users for a year, which is like probably too much. And Bitwarden seems cheaper. And besides the multi-line strings support that I, I discovered, it seemed uh, decent enough. All right, so that was for today. Thank you very much. And uh, hope to see you next week as well on Monday. See you, everyone. Goodbye.